I want to do some work with high voltage things like radios and oscilloscopes that have vacuum tubes in them and when you're fooling around with stuff like that you should be using an isolation transformer so that uh, everything's floating with respect to earth. Now I haven't seen any uh, isolation transformers for less than about 150 bucks around here so even on eBay and a poor man's method is to use two back-to-back -back transformers like these guys. Now so you put 240 volts in, into one, out comes some lower voltage, doesn't really matter what, but you put that into the corresponding windings on an identical transformer, and out the other side, you should get something like the original 240 volts again. But now, it's been twice isolated, so it's completely floating with respect to the earth that that's referenced to. Now I want to do a bit of experimenting to see what sort of efficiency I can get out of them, how much loss there is how hot they get, you know, how, how many watts goes in versus how many watts comes out and how, how hot they get in the process and there's those which I estimate at maybe 60 VA and uh, if I want to go up a bit I've got a couple of these 32 volts, 32 volts 4.7 amps that comes out to 150 VA, 150 watts and I've got two of them. This, this one's even brand new in box. Let's have a look. Oh, a bit of newspaper from the Flemington races today. No, I don't think. I think that race has been run and won long ago. 1986. So yeah, two of those and there, that should be good for 150 odd watts and uh, th these got, even these ones should be good enough for most applications, subject to them not being too inefficient, too much loss of power across them. Uh, certainly these 150 VA, I mean things like this radio are only 40 watts so 100, 150 should be more than enough and uh, if, if I ever do need substantially more than that. Then I've got these big beautiful girls, two of them, actually I've actually got three of them, they weigh 22 kilograms each and from what I can gather they look to be about 2000 VA compared to 150, so uh, they will be my reference point, they represent the absolute best that I can hope to get from back to back transformers used for isolation and I'll compare what sort of losses I get out of those to these other two types. Now, these actually came out of a IBM 4341 mainframe computer from around 1980. The internal power supplies of the computer expected 110 volts but three phase. In countries like Australia where we have 230 volts phase to neutral the machines were then fitted with three of these to step down to the requirements of the internal power supplies. So three of them, one per phase. I'm, I'm glad I pulled those things apart because to get one of these things now, brand new, performance like that, absolute minimum 700 Australian dollars for something brand new that, that does what these do. And I got three of them for Nick, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Anyway, uh, time to knock up some sort of a test jig arrangement to see how they go. Now what, what I'm planning to do is use these multifunction meters which measure uh, power, uh, voltage, current, uh, power and energy, two of them. This one's on the output of the Variac and I want to run the output of the Variac through a pair of back-to-back -back transformers and have that then go through the meter to a dummy load made up of a couple of light bulbs. But before running it through transformers, I just want to check the meters agree with each other. These need at least 80 volts to run. This one's got a, a altered circuit, so it works any output voltage from the Variac. But if we take this to 240 volts, you see they agree on voltage. 
but not on current and therefore not on power or energy. Ignore the energy numbers that they're accumulated over time. So, but we're interested in the voltage, current and power. Taking up to 240 volts. This is a 25 watt light bulb, so 240. This one says 23.24 24 watts. This one says 28. He reads a bit high. And if we stick in a 75, it's much closer, and this is a 100 watt, this Edison one, 95 volts, watts, and the highest I can get obviously is when I plug both of these in. I did have some big 150 watt bulbs, but they are burnt out. So 170 watts is the biggest load I can put on this. These two don't agree. They agree on voltage, but not on current. And I've tested it at all sorts of voltages and with different combinations of loads. And it's very consistent that this one reads 1.14 more times more than this one does. So to fix that, I'd have to get in there and, and fiddle with the current sent resistor, which is only a milliohm, I believe. So. Uh, I'll do that one day, but uh, for now, to compare the readings, I'll just divide whatever comes out of this one by 1.14. Output from the variac comes in here, goes to these two terminals. Now I've looped them back, but this is where the isolation transformer would go. It goes into the meter and then out to the load. So the next thing to do is to actually stick in two transformers in here. So that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, this one I've ohmed out the terminals and it was, there's about 18 ohms between these two so I'm figuring that's the mains input. These, all these others and one over there are all connected together at very low resistance so it's just multi-tap secondary with a primary here so I'll stick, uh, connect that to the, the 240 volts and see what voltages I get out this side and pick the two high, the, the highest one as the connection to the upper transformer. So with uh, 240 volts going into the transformer I found that between these two terminals here there's a lot of varnish on them so it's hard to make contact but 30 volts AC from there to there and just doing nothing no load 4.7 watts going into him. Okay, now I'll wire those corresponding terminals to his mate. Then we'll look at what comes out on the secondary side of that one. Well, the primary side, but it will be the secondary. Alright, now I've got the AC coming out of the Variac via this wire to this transformer. The 30 volt secondary from him to the 30 volt secondary on the other. And the... 240 volt primary on the other going into the meter and into the dummy loads which aren't connected at the moment let's just see what comes out uh, that won't work until there's about 80 volts coming coming from it so let's see if it blows up turning up the very high voltage and pretty good agreement voltage wise so at 240 volts, we are wasting twice, more than twice as much. Remember there was about 4.7 watts being wasted doing nothing here. Well, now we've doubled it. Yeah, doubled it. Uh, right, I'll turn that back down a bit and then stick in a load. Dim glow in there. Okay, firing up the volts again. Still... Pretty good agreement on voltage. 240 going in, 234 coming out. So we're losing about 6 volts, but to be expected, some, some loss. Uh, we haven't quite got our 25 watts because we haven't got our 240 volts. This reads higher than what's really being consumed, so now let's get 240 volts here. And we've got to stick in 246. 
Not too bad. Let's see what happens if we try a higher wattage. That was 25. Now put in a 75. To get 240 volts out now, we have to go up quite high here. 270 almost. 105 watts showing there, 75 there. Dare we go to 175 all the way? Probably won't be able to get 240 volts. Right, the glare out of the way a bit. Um, 175 watt load, 260 going in, we're only getting 202 out. So, and to get 240 out, that that's the maximum. 286 going in, only 223 coming out. Now, I don't know how this would compare with an actual proper isolation transformer, but we're getting a fair bit of drop under load here. 75 watts, not too bad a loss, and it can be compensated with the Variac. You can get 240 out by going up to 270 input. These guys look like they're probably going to be good for up to 75 watts. I'll leave it on for a little while and see how warm they get. Now these two transformers have been running for probably about an hour now with a 75 watt load. That one's quite warm. I wouldn't call it hot by any means. This one's cooler. It's certainly not hot. It's not straining at all. And remember, it's got no... It's not bolted to a metal case or anything either. So, and, and it was consuming about 5 watts just doing nothing. So it's, it's not much hotter than I would have expected from just that. So I, I'd say yep, th th these things can easily cope with the 75 watt load. The other issue with it is, is the uh, poor load regulation, or line regulation, or which is it? If I change that to 100 watts, we've dropped another 6 volts. It's the same 270 volt input, so now it's 175 watts and went down to 200 volts. And at that point, the variant can't compensate enough. Even 285 won't give us 240 out. That's the limit. I'd, I'd say it's probably good for 100 watts. If you can, well, let's see it. We can get two, 240 volts of 100 watt load. 100 watt load, and yeah, we can get 240 volts. We've got to stick 280 in. But yeah, so maybe with a bit bit of cooling. Who knows what it'd be like if it had a heat sink, a metal case to be in. But uh, I would say that those guys can do 100 watts fairly easily, providing you've got a very active uh, to compensate. Uh, and if your load was varying, then it'd be up and down all over the place. So probably bigger is better always. We'll find that out in a moment. The windings are actually cooler than the than the laminations. 75 to 100 watts is, is pretty cool. As a sanity check, 240 volts coming out. Let's just see that it at least agrees with this meter. 276 going in, right? so they agree. And then with this meter coming out of the isolation transformer, very similar. And of course, does it isolate? I'll connect this to the ground on the Variac. And, right, we've got 280 volts to neutral, uh, to active. So yes, that's dangerous to touch. Neutral's all right, providing it's wired properly. But on the other side, ground to either side of that, nothing. So it is isolating. The other thing you may be wondering is, obviously 30 volts versus 240 volts, the current in here is eight times what the current in there is. So is there any loss over those wires? Go down to here. 31.5 and 31.6, so negligible voltage drop across there. So the, the losses are in all those windings. That's enough of these two. Let's try the next size up. Now these transformers, which are more than twice as big as the other guys, these are four and a half kilos, those were two kilos each. I'll start off lowish. Yeah, so once again, 
input and output voltages agree with no load. Start off with the little 25 watts. Got 4 volts already. 240 output. I'm going to stick 246 in. Go to 75. And it's dropped so to get 240 out again. Two more. It's not quite as bad. I think we have to go to 260 with, with the smaller transformers. Now let's put in the this guy and get a 175 watt load with 268 volts going in. Even even with uh, 280 going in with the other transformers, I couldn't get the 240 out with this load of 175 watts. So an improvement. So I'll leave that run with that 175 watt load just just for a little while. I've got power bills to pay and no money to do it with, so I'll let it go for just 15 minutes and um, see how hot they get. Now that's been near enough to 20 minutes with uh, 175 watt load, 240 volts coming out of here, requiring 270 input. And how warm have these things got? That one's pretty much stone cold. This one, the laminations are cold. There's a bit of warmth on the windings. But yeah, the, the, these things are purring. So I'd say certainly for a transformer that size, if you've got a very active compensate for the voltage drop, you know, it's good for 150, 200 watts. So here we have the girls connected up. Uh, they're secondary wired together. This one is the input, this one's the output, uh, and we'll stick some volts in. 130 odd to begin with, and give it a 25 watt load. Wind it up to, till we get 240 showing on this one. Bit of a buzz coming out of them. And 241, 42 coming in, so only losing a volt or two across that system. So let's try a 75 watt load. Still only two volts difference with no load. And only one or two volts difference with 75 watt load. So now I'll screw in the 100 watt bulb so we'll have 175 watt load. And still only two volts difference. So that's where these guys really shine. The, the ability to not sag under load so that would be important if the load that you're working on through the isolation transformers was the sort of thing that might vary its load. If it didn't, if, if it was a fairly constant drain, then those other pairs of transformers, especially those grey ones, are certainly up to the task for 150-200 watts as long as you've got the variac to up the input voltage to compensate for the losses. If the load is fairly constant, then yeah. What's left to test now is um, to try and see how these things go with a much heavier load than 175 watts, because you know, it should be good for 1,500, 2,000. I'll see if I can knock up something. So as a load for the big transformers, I found this toaster oven thing. It draws about 1,200 watts, and I've disconnected the light bulbs and put in that power socket instead. So turning it on, now I'll turn on the toaster oven and I'll have to put on the timer to make it work so there'll be this clicking sound. So there's only a few volts drop there but let's take it up to 240 on the output and you can hear the transformer starting to buzz. So 240 coming out and I've had to put in only 248 on the input for 1200 watts of power. And I'm sure these guys could go probably much closer to 2 kilowatts than this. And the Variac can put out 280 volts. And it's rated at 3 kVA at, at that end of the scale. So it's entirely possible that I could have an isolated supply for up to 2 kilowatts. I'll let it run for just 10 minutes. I don't have anything to cook, otherwise I'd put it in the oven. But, um, all right, this is 
about 10 maybe even 15 minutes later and the top of the toast oven and I reckon it's hotter than that because it's silver and um, at a strange angle it's too hot to touch that's for sure it burns and inside here of course it's stinking hot the element over 300 degrees the transformers on top 26 26 the windings 27 27 they're just not even they're not even warm they're just a little bit warmer than ambient like mounting flanges on the transformers which are wouldn't have heated up much by now. 26. So these things are, are just laughing. They're saying, is that all you got? So I'm quite, quite sure they'll be able to handle at least 1500 continuously. And with a bit of cooling, it would run even harder. That's enough power wasted. So what I think I'll do is use, I'll use these guys. I'll make a, uh, isolation transformer box out of that with one of these on the outside and an IEC socket on, on the input. The big ones, the girls, I'll try and put uh, some sort of a, a handle arrangement on them so that they can be transported reasonably easily because they're 22 kilograms and and but separate of course because they're way too heavy together um, and some sort of a terminal connector arrangement that makes it easy to configure it like this or any other way make them good general purpose heavy duty transformers for nearly all applications these two would be more than adequate and if i really needed to isolate a lot of power i could quickly wire those two up to do it so there you have it isolation transformers quite viable by using back-to-back -back transformers as long as you've got decent ratings and helped very much by having a variac to increase the input voltage to compensate for any droop hope you enjoyed if you did give it a like please and subscribe if you like catch you later